Welcome to the Writer Showcase Podcast. I'm Phil Nasons, and I'm the host of this podcast, brought to you by the authors who appear, and also by you, the listening public. You won't hear any commercials or advertisements, because this podcast is funded solely by the writers who appear, and also by you, the listening audience. If you would like to be a guest on the show, or would like to support the work being done here, please contact me at www thewritershow.wordpress.com and I will get you there. Tonight we'll be talking about a children's book called On Top of the Rainbow and here to join us, please welcome that author and my friend Katrina Metter is on the show. Katrina, how you doing? Welcome to the program. Thank you, Phil. I'm doing great. All right. Now this is, you've been here a couple of times now, so you kind of know the drill. But some people may not have known who you are or not have heard these other two programs. Who is Katrina Metter? And yeah, you could just give us the 411, I guess. Okay. Um, well, as my Twitter description says, I am an aircraft mechanic, a hopeless a romantic as well. <laughs> so um, I currently live in. Yukon, Oklahoma, which is right outside of Oklahoma City, and I grew up in the great state of Texas, in the heart of it, called a, a small town called Cross Plains, Texas. All right, Cross Plains, Texas, and now you live in Oklahoma City? I live in a suburb outside of it. Okay, that's fair enough. So you've been to the Oklahoma City Thunder? I have. What a great time that was. Loud City. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm getting ready to do my uh, radio show after we do this. I do a sports show, as Katrina knows, and we'll be doing Oklahoma City hoops tonight. So it'll be a lot of fun for that, too. So I'm getting ready for Welcome to Loud City. But we're not here to talk about the blunder and thunder. We're talking about <laughs> On Top of the Rainbow. This is a children's book. This is a huge departure from what we've used to seen from you. Why a children's yes. book? Wow, you know, I never really did see myself writing for children because it is just a different mentality that you have to have when you're used to writing for adults. And this book has come across um, or came along because I was observing um, my boyfriend play with his grandson outside, and it was just one of those really magical moments for families making memories. I mean, they were laughing, they were smiling. It was a nice crisp fall day. They had their jackets on. And I mean, it was just leaves were everywhere. I mean, it was just a great moment. And I, I really wanted to capture that moment. And the way I do that is through writing. And this is how On Top of the Rainbow came about. Yep. Sounds good to me. Uh, so children's books, again, what were the challenges for you to write a children's book after spending so much time writing historical fiction? The language. I had to really tone down the language to simpler terms, shorter sentences, and um, com coming up with a conflict for a child for the appropriate age, um, that, was, that was interesting. I'll tell you what, run, or actually getting yourself into trouble and then running away from home, that's a common theme. How, is, how does this book address that? Well, that is the underlying theme of this book because I believe that most young children think about running away and think it's something as a romanticism. It's easy. It would be fun. It would be different. And we all know that's not the way it is. And so this book has an opening for parents to read to their children and to open up that discussion about, you know, no matter what you do, I'm always going to be here for you. No matter what happens, I will always love you. And give them that support so when something does go wrong, instead of running away from their problems, they have the courage to go to their parent and face it and be able to work through this problem with their parents and not alienate them. Now that's a nice story. It's too bad that that doesn't happen more often. That's true. 
Times have changed from the times when we were kids. That's very true. And I hope that this will be an opportunity for parents to read to their children to be able to talk about this without having to browbeat it in them. So, you know, some of the best lessons are done on, you know, a fun environment like this book is. I mean, it has unicorns and leprechauns and rainbows and, and it has a, it carries a very important message as well. Well, it absolutely does. Now, as a kid, what was your favorite child's book? I like to read Ricky Ticky Tabby backstory. Okay, I, I, mine was Toby Tyler. That was when uh, my grandma actually read it to me. She was a librarian, and uh, so we used to get a lot of books from there. But uh, she read it, and it's about a little kid who runs away and joins the circus. And that's basically what I did when I came to Greece. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like Toby Tyler. I think I'm going to change my name. I think that's what I'm going to use as my next pen name. Cool. Toby Tyler. Anyhow, here's what we've got tonight. Well, I like Ticky Tabby. Yeah. yeah. I really like Ricky Ticky Tabby because of the mongoose who saved the child from the cobras. Okay, I didn't read that one, so I must have I missed out. Maybe I'll have to Google that. <laughs> uh, nick it off of one of those free book sites. Right. But anyhow, uh, now I'll tell you this. This has been reviewed. The reviews have been quite interesting. I, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to read a couple of them here. Okay. One of them came in. This is a good one. I read this story to my six-year-old, and he had a lot of questions about it. Why did Gabe go alone into the woods? Why didn't the leprechaun wear green? Will he find his family? I asked my son what he thought of it and how many stars he would give it. He looked at me a while, then said, I want to slide down a rainbow, so it was good. Rainbows make everything better, don't they? That's a nice review, huh? It is. That puts a smile on my face because, you know, for an author to write a story that children really enjoy, that's the best compliment a writer can get. It really is. Absolutely. Uh I don't think too many kids read anything that I write or listen to my show, thankfully. But uh, still in all, that's great. Now, do you read every one of your reviews? I try to. Uh, well, no, actually I do. <laughs> and I go in there and I respond to them on Amazon as well. All right. See, I, I don't really read them. Um, I couldn't even tell you where the ones are on iTunes or Stitcher or any of those places. I do interact a little bit with people who uh, comment on the various sites who, uh, when when someone's a guest on my sports show, they put up the appearance on their site, and sometimes I interact with those guys, but generally I don't. So that's good that you do. What do you find the best about interacting with your critics? Well, um, I don't really get a lot of responses on Amazon whenever I go and reply to theirs, but... Uh, I do enjoy interacting with them when I'm at the book signings and uh, through Facebook. I, I get messages through Facebook. And I really enjoy meeting the people who read my books and uh, learning about them as well. All right. That's good. I, I, okay. I could go places with that, but I won't. <laughs> this is a family show. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, we have another comment here or another review, I should say. My seven-year-old daughter loved this book. She loved the unicorn and the illustration of the unicorn, probably her favorite part. When I asked her about her favorite part of the story, she quickly got to the part that said, Oh, giddy goo, daddy boo, loop diddly la do. She laughed, and I thought it was silly and funny. That's a good review. I think I just butchered it, but uh, that's a good review too, right? It is a good review. That one just uh, tickles me pink thinking about it because, you know, that unicorn that was the illustrator did, did just a wonderful job. The, it's just a beautiful unicorn. And then the talk that goes with Le the leprechaun, whose name is Lep, you know, it, it's supposed to be a fun and silly book and, and at the same time carry that underlying meaning as well. But if you don't have something that's fun and attractive and entertaining, the children aren't going to like it. And I am so glad that the children here are enjoying this book. Well, they're your intended audience, right? They are. And it seems like a couple of the parents are interested or enjoying it too. 
Now, Gabe was mentioned. Tell us a little bit about who is Gabe. He's the main character of the story, right? He is. Gabe is a sweet, fun, energetic, creative, young little boy who is in real name, who in real life goes by Gabriel. And uh, I wanted to pattern the main character after him, which I did, except for in the story, I had to add some conflict to make it interesting. But uh, yeah, Gabe is patterned after Gabriel, who is a precious, precious little boy. You don't have to worry about giving too much away here because you know, the parents probably aren't going to get that excited about it. <laughs> They're there right. to read it for their kids. And that's just it. On Top of the Rainbow seems, at least to me, to be meant or was meant to be read by an adult to a child before bed, right? That's correct. That's when I heard <laughs> all my great stories. Yep. You can uh, use it in quiet time if you have one before bed or if it's bad weather outside. Because, you know, sometimes being up here in Oklahoma and areas, it gets pretty cold. <laughs> in a lot of places it does. Now, what level of reading skill would a child need to be able to read it for themselves? Even though it's meant to be read by mom or dad or babysitter, big brother, whatever, how old would a kid need to be to read this book? I would think probably in the second grade unless you have a very advanced reader and that would put them around the first grade level. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think so. I think a first grader could read that, depending on how 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 good their reading skill is. Yeah. You use very it's very simply written. It's it's tremendous. Uh, I even was able to read it, so that means <laughs> you know it must be all right. But we have another review here. Read this to my children today on a snowy day, and they loved it. It had the sense of adventure that keeps them entertained. They love the illustrations as well. How important are illustrations to a children's book, Katrina? I believe that for a children's book, it's very important. As uh, children are just miniature adults, and a lot of people are very visual. You could have, I mean, look at all the social media. You know, many of it is photos going through there. It catches the attention. It catches their eye. It brings interest in. It keeps it. It keeps a child interested and the illustrator did a good job on the these pictures i'm very happy with them and who was the illustrator uh cheryl casey and where do we find cheryl you can visit her website at ccr uh, book design on the website and you can find that on your website right um no she has her own website i mean you can find a link to that on her website right or on your yeah. website uh, actually, I don't have a uh, a link for hers on my website. Okay, and what's that website web address again? CCR. In case anyone wants to uh, check out some of her other work, because she's part of this book, right? Yes, she is. It's uh, www.ccrbookcoverdesign.com. Perfect. All right, so. Uh, now, are there any more children's books in your future? Yes, there is. Um, I actually have one going through my Christie's group right now, and the illustrator has a rough draft of the story, and I'm looking for a March release for that one. It's going to be called Princess Alexia and the Dragon. And then later on in the year, I'm going to be publishing a book for, about adoption. And... Um, that's going to be for a special family who lives up near Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tremendous. Now, where can we find you? I am at, my website is www.authorkmatter.com. And the Twitter is Author K. Matter. That's correct. All right. Great stuff. Thank you so much for being on the show with me. We wish you all the best with all your future endeavors and the current ones. And we hope you come back and tell us about the next one. Thank you. I've enjoyed being here, Phil. All right. Thank you so much. Again, that's Katrina Metter, and you can find her at authorkmetter.com or on Twitter at authorkmetter. Now, this book is something else. I think you should grab it. If you get the chance, you should buy On Top of the Rainbow. If you want to spend a little quality time with your young one, 
this is the book for you. If you want to introduce your youngster into reading, this is a book for you. This crosses all types of uh, age and genres. No matter where you're from or what you're into, this book will, well, it just works. And I think you should grab it, and you'll be able to by hitting the link that I will provide in the show notes. And that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Writers Showcase Podcast. Again, if you'd like to be a guest on the show or would like to support the work being done here, you can contact me at www.thewritershow.wordpress.com. Until next time, I'm Phil Nason. Enjoy the reading.